Picture this, the dentist's chair, two days before Christmas Eve. The hygienist is at work. Frank Sinatra is on the sound system. I don't care for Frank Sinatra. I don't care for Frank Sinatra crooning Silent Night. And then it's Frank Sinatra singing my next least favorite Christmas song, Oh Holy Night. And then the hygienist starts singing along, out of tune. And there is nothing I can do. There is nowhere I can go to get away from it. It is Advent Christmas purgatory for the religious professional. <laughs> Maybe for the music professional as well. Is it any wonder that I then answered a lovely email from my sister with the glum dregs of my Frank Sinatra dental appointment? I have no doubt that I am out of touch with the manner in which Christmas is observed by most of America. But if I had any doubts, sitting in the nail salon this afternoon while the bold and the beautiful was playing on the television confirmed how unlike my Christmas is with soap opera folks. Why is it that Frank Sinatra never sang the letter from Titus? Oh, come on, that was funny. <laughs> For the grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. There, that's enough. The reading from Titus that we heard this evening says all that we need to hear tonight for Christmas. For the grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. It's what we've been waiting for, for all of Advent. We've opened all the little doors on our Advent calendars. We've followed the slow down, be quiet, it's Advent posters. We've lighted candles around Advent wreaths. We have waited and watched. We have tried to wake up. We've tried out new spiritual practices so that we may be transformed and then transform the world. We have tuned our ears to the prophetic voices of our tradition. That's Advent for all of us. Now Advent is done and dusted, and we've dug around in our attics and in our garages to find all the things that we think that we need to observe Christmas. And here it is, all along. We didn't need to get grimy or to climb up any ladders or break a sweat at the mall. A verse from Titus, the New English Bible version, for the grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Do you remember the story of the adult Jesus in Luke's gospel and in Matthew's? We hear of John the baptizer sending two of his own disciples to Jesus to ask, are you the one who is to come or are we to expect some other? Jesus says to them, go and tell John what you have heard and seen how the blind recover their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are made clean, the deaf hear and the dead are raised to life, and the poor are hearing good news. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? A man in silks and satins? A prophet? Yes, a prophet in camel skin. Some of the people accepted John the Baptist and some didn't. Just as some did and others didn't accept the teaching and the authority of Jesus. Jesus had the temerity to point out to folks their inauthenticity 
He would call them out because of their do as I say, not as I do. That will get you into trouble every time, always. I'm not calling anyone out tonight. Some of us are just grateful to have made it here, frazzled the bits and all. Some of us are grateful to be here, mournful bits and all, but we're here. And I'm asking, what did you come out to 1400 Riverside Drive to look at? The candles? The poinsettia? Your friends? Did you come to seek solace? Did you hear, did you come to hear a brass quintet and have a musical thrill? Trust me, I have gone to church on Christmas Eve for all those reasons. Did you come for the baby in the manger? Did you come for assurance? Be assured, music is prayer for many. Community is prayer for others. The touchstone that we are one with the other as the other and we grow in the spirit of Christ. We need the baby. We need the baby. But the baby grows up. We need to grow up with the baby. The baby grows up and shows us how we are to live our own growing up faith, our maturity in faith. He grows up. And then he shows us how to grow up in the parables that confound us. He shows us in the washing of feet and the feeding of people. He shows us by forgiving betrayal and the unforgivable. He shows us in the upper room and on the cross and on the road to Emmaus. We are called to grow in faith and in our practice of the faith with every observance of Christmas and Easter, all saints and Pentecost. And every time we crack open a Bible to study, and every time we stretch out our hands to receive heavenly food, God is calling us to grow up. Grow up and step away from the manger Grow up and step away from the manger every time our lips move in silent prayer and we are able to be still and know God. For the grace of God has dawned upon the earth with healing for all. And that is just what we need. We don't need a magic wand or a fake wizard behind the curtain. It is grace and healing we need, every last one of us. And I am guessing that every last one of us here tonight knows it. But there are those who don't know their need. And there are those who have never been to the manger to peer in and see the grace of God wrapped in swaddling clothes. Where are the angels when you need them? Here are the angels. You are the angels, the messengers, for that is what angelos means, messenger. You have been to the manger and you have seen the good news, all ten toes, eight fingers, and two thumbs of good news. And now you step away from the manger to live and to grow in faith, to do the work that God has given you to do, wherever it is. And there is so much to do. We do it as we are able. We do it as we are saved, as we are being healed, the verb in the Greek is the same, 
for saved and healed. We do it as we prepare for the manger, walk to the manger, walk away from the manger, back and forth and back and forth and back by grace. I feel it tonight, don't you? The world has such needs. Do I need to recite the long list of needs? Please say no. If you are here with some regularity on a Sunday, you have heard the needs. You have heard us beg, cajole, whine, and pray about them. You may have raised our awareness of a need. You may have been a problem solver, an advocate, helping hands. If you're a visitor, please return. This congregation not only hears the word, but does, hears and does, hears and does lots for the zeal of the Lord with zeal for the doing of good works. You could help us do more for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of him whom you have met in the manger. Indeed, there is a long list of needs in the world and in our very own lives long lists. Make your list, check it twice, and then commend it to our prayers in just a moment. But in the meantime, Titus has our very good news. The grace of God has dawned upon the world for the healing of all.